Why would a government just spend $70 billion on acquiring the rights to mine? You've got to take into consideration how enormous the whole quantity is. China is one nation that has made the decision to put up such money in order to secure mining rights. However, why does China desire it? And what enables it to be willing to shell out such a big sum of cash? China is the only country in the world to own production units and industries that are both the largest and the most technologically advanced. China has been steadily increasing its economic might over the last several decades, and as a result, it has emerged as the world's second largest economic power in recent years. However, this task was not a simple one. China was forced to take measures that no other country would even consider attempting. Before we go on, subscribe to this channel to watch about the most shocking and amazing world projects. China did an excellent job of meeting the challenge posed by eradicating poverty as well as unemployment. And all of its origins may be traced back to the industries, factories, and most effective manufacturing units that the country possesses. If it weren't for its extensive industrial network, China could function quite well without anything else. But how exactly do you build industries, make them bigger, and use them to your advantage so that you may make a lot of money? The most significant exporter on a global scale is China. China must keep up with the ever-increasing demands that are coming from all around the world if it is to continue to hold on to this title. China is the only nation on the face of the earth that is capable of producing goods of a diverse range of qualities and quantities, and it does so at an unprecedented scale. It is remarkable that they can make tens of different variations of the same product thanks to the manufacturing miracle that they have. However, the question that still has to be answered is how China can maintain its advantageous position. Now, in order to answer that question, we need to get back to first principles, which is exactly what this video will cover. Consider the process of building factories in your head. The construction of the infrastructure requires a significant amount of iron, steel, and several other types of metals. It goes without saying that you require policies, employees, and resources. However, the initial step is the location where the remaining components will be integrated at a later time. However, it is common knowledge that China possesses the world's most advanced industrial infrastructure. In order to accomplish it, it need iron in the form of billions upon billions of tons. It doesn't matter if it wants to create factories for the economic drive or other social initiatives, it absolutely needs iron. And this particular nation is home to the greatest number of people on the entire planet. It was already aware of the fact that if it depended only on its own iron mines and deposits, it would quickly exhaust all of those resources. Simply put, the demand is so great that the iron reserves would only survive for a few years at most, given the current rate of use. In such case, China will be recognized as a nation that is deficient in the material required for the growth of iron. When nations realize that another nation is missing in something that is absolutely necessary to the economic engine, they will band together to form a barrier. Or, to put it another way, they would be brought together by a superpower and used to carry out a strategy devised by that superpower. In this scenario, because China poses a threat to the United States, the United States will attempt to organize a bloc that will put a halt to the shipment of any and As a result, China wants to explore its alternatives in the international community before risking running out of reserves and giving the impression that it is an economically hopeless nation. To put it another way, it intends to make use of the iron ore. It has previously been implemented in other nations. Its goal is to maximize profit from the abundant iron riches held by emerging countries. However, they are not capable of extracting the iron on their own. They are reliant on a third nation that is able to make a payment in exchange for the mining rights. Maybe you could refer to it as the rent, or you could pay a certain fee for the mining. The Simandu Iron Ore Deposit in Guinea, which is the biggest iron ore mine in the world, is currently being exploited in the very same manner by China. The mining rights would reportedly cost China a hefty price of $70 billion, but China has opted to pay for them anyhow. Permit me to go into further detail about this. The acquisition of mining rights is not the same thing as the purchase of a mining site by a nation. When China pays the $70,000, this does not mean that China will automatically control the iron ore mine in Simandu. Instead, it indicates that China will be granted the permission to operate the Simandu iron ore mine and to harvest any quantity of iron ore it sees fit. 
because no nation could possibly step in and raise an objection to the quantities that China will be extracting. China has agreed to pay $70 billion in exchange for the right to do so. This sum is a price that China must pay in order to utilize the mining site in the most productive manner possible. The extraction of billions of tons of iron ore from the mine by China is an endeavor that will result in a lucrative business transaction. It is clear to observe when one considers the fact that China will soon begin importing 1 billion tons of iron ore on an annual basis. It accounts for 70% of China's total use of iron ore. The fact that Australia was the source of the majority of China's imported iron ore is an interesting fact. But now that it has the legal right to access the world's largest iron ore deposit, China will no longer need to do business with Australia. It won't have to fork up billions of dollars to Australia on its own just to have access to iron ore. Instead, it is going to mine as much iron ore as it can while still turning a profit on the transaction. Before China decided to acquire the mining rights, it performed some research and discovered that the Samindu iron ore mine had total reserves of 5 billion tons of iron ore and had previously taken 2.25 billion tons of iron ore. China then went ahead and bought the mining rights. Without knowing how much money China spent in 2021 to acquire 1.1 billion tons of iron ore, we are unable to determine how lucrative this endeavor is. China paid $180 billion. If we take into account this pricing and estimate the cost of 2.25 billion tons, we get an amount that is almost comparable to $360 billion. And the answer is yes, there are 2.75 billion metric tons of iron that China has not yet removed. To put it another way, China will be able to acquire 5 billion tons of iron ore at the low price of only $70 billion. If it hadn't been for the Samandu iron ore mine, the company would have had to shell out $818 billion for the same quantity of the mineral. Simply put, China has avoided incurring costs totaling over $748 billion as a result of only one contract. In this way, China is strategically leaving the rest of the globe in the dust. The money that would have been spent is instead invested into projects that would bring in income, and the cycle is continued indefinitely. What are your thoughts? Didn't China successfully complete the lucrative transaction? If the United States were to comment, how might they take advantage of and misuse this deal? Share your opinion in comments. Also, click on this video to watch about another shocking project.